Good morning, this is Ron Brown. It is uh, the 19th of September, and uh, I'm going to uh, review the uh, video that I uh, posted on YouTube and on the Facebook page and so on about uh, a uh, group inclusion report uh, which uses uh, uh, some of the uh, smart groups in HGSI. Now, I've uh, been on the Skype board and some of you are having trouble locating that file and I'm going to show you how to get there. Now normally you just go to the designer, you click on this arrow, you clear this, you load the selection and it takes you to this folder where you're going to find uh, several of these uh, what are called GSEL scans, I call them GIR scans, and you're going to load them. But if you can't find that because of a new installation or you've restored or something like that, I'm going to show you how you can get there. Go to your help menu. Go to fast facts. This area is already selected. Do a control C for copying. And then what you want to do is you want to come back here to the designer. Now mine is going to go to the correct place. But I'm just going to see if I can do this anyway. I'm going to click up here in this area and notice that it is now selected. Then I'm going to do a control V, hit my enter key, and it's going to take me to these two folders. You want to go to the user folder and there is a folder at the bottom called WBGSEL. Open that, select whatever scan you want to run and uh, I'll select number 16 because that's what I'm using and it selects 180 groups. Now the 180 groups that it's selecting, most of those are industry groups. And then I'm selecting a few others. Consistent earnings growth, I want stocks with consistent earnings growth. And I also want stocks that are high relative strength stocks and I want the stocks and groups moving to the upside. There's only four smart groups in here. And then I'm going to make a group from this report. But there's something else I need to do to run this scan properly. So I'm not going to run it here. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to go back into my warehouse view. And I am using my Wyckoff demand scan. So I want to find the, I'm in folder number 20. I'm going to my demand supply. I'm going to use the demand higher volume wider spread scan and it's looking for stocks that are showing a lot of demand right now. And now I can go back into the designer. I can click on this. I'm going to clear this. I'm going to load this. I'm going to load this again. And now notice that the scan that I'm using in the warehouse is now featured right here. So I want to use the applied filter which is, which is attached to this view. And this has to be in at least three groups. Now one of the groups is taken up by the industry groups. I know that. So I want it to either be a box stock or I want it to be in stocks and groups moving up or raw relative strength. I don't care what the combination is, but I want to see them in three. Now this uh, is the 18th. I'm just going to call these uh, top demand stocks. And where am I putting it? I'm just going to put it up here in my user groups. And I just use the number 50 arbitrarily. Uh, I'm not going to get 50 stocks, I know that, but I'll get all of them. So I'll just put example on here so I can differentiate from what I've already done. I'm going to click on that. And what do I have here? I have several stocks. And if I scroll down to the bottom, notice that the last one is included in three groups. The industry group and stocks and groups moving to the upside of both of them, the regular one and the 1 to 15. Now if I scroll back up to the top, you can see that uh, here's the group count on these. Uh, this one, SAVA, is included in 
five different groups and then down the line four and then three and so on. So that's what the limitation on the, uh, when I'm running this right here, I'm, I'm using the filter and I'm limiting to three groups. I don't want to look at uh, stocks that are just in one group or two groups. So that's the way you do it. And then it uh, goes in and uh, if you tell it to make group from report, it makes that group. Now I'm going to flip back over to the uh, designer and here is uh, the example. And I'm going to just flip through to the warehouse and the warehouse is the scan that I'm using to run this. And you can see how these stocks uh, line up based upon the uh, end of day uh, combo. And look over here, you can see that uh, I, I put some black charts in here for my own use. I included them. If you uh, want to use them, fine. If you don't, uh, that's fine too. Now this is uh, the uh, intraday chart, even though it's a weekend, it gives me uh, the information. This stock uh, was up 14.67%. Uh, and uh, you may say, well, yeah, it, it came up in this one. How did it do before? Well, let's go look. Now, what I did uh, the past, uh, well, I don't know, yesterday, I guess, I went back and I color-coded uh, uh, these single demand charts. And, uh, for example, the chart that I use on this, wherever there's a green bar, uh, that goes back in time and it looks to see where there was a demand scan or a scan where this particular stock passed it. It passed it yesterday, it passed it the day before, passed it here, passed it here, passed it here, passed it here, and so on. And clear back here. And then over here, there were several instances too. Now let's look at Bloom Energy. This is the first signal in many days where it passed the demand signal. Look at that volume coming in. You can see that there have been a couple of VPA flags and a third one, an effort to rise. It closed a little bit off of its high, but well, the group was moving up. It looks like it rolled over a little bit. Now remember, the market was down uh, yesterday. Now Sava, uh, I mentioned, uh, I didn't take it unfortunately because I have been busy working on this stuff, but I said uh, on uh, Thursday it looks like it was setting up to go again and it uh, gapped up and uh, you can see the demand was there. Huge demand here, demand here, then did, did, didn't do anything, and then demand, demand. Let me find another. Uh, st this has been a stellar stock that several guys in the board, the uh, Skype board, have been in on. You can see all the demand signals and then it it beat people up in here if they held on to it. But then here is a demand signal. And then on Wednesday, Got another one, broke out to a new high. Okay, let's do one more thing. I'm going to go into um, my designer again. Uh, these are the uh, groups that I managed to capture. I believe I missed uh, the 13th. But uh, let's just go in here, take this filter off. And uh, you can see that back on the 8th, these were the stocks. Uh, I believe this is the first day I did it. So I'm going to uh, run the, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'll run this one first. I'm going to choose the group and this is uh, the eighth. And I'm going to Click on the 9th and it'll be the opening price on the 9th uh, through Friday, yesterday, the closing price. Let's see how this group of stocks did over that time period. So I ran it. And if you look at this, it's not uh, all that impressive, but it was uh, the group as a whole was at 3.02% compared to minus 1.49 for the SPX. So there's a 4.5% uh, difference there, which is actually quite a bit. 31 Gators, 19 Losers, 62 to 38. Uh, this goes to show you the importance of using stops 
when you take a trade. Now let's look at some of the winners. Jounce over this time period up 34%. Uh, let's see, NVCR up 33%. Uh, Lifeway Foods up 28% and so on. What was the biggest loser here? Uh, IEA, this is a stock that I was actually in. I had a close stop on it and uh, I got stopped out and it's a good thing I did because it's down uh, nearly 22%. Now remember, as you all know, the markets have really been choppy uh, recently. In fact, uh, if I go back to the third where we had the first uh, big down day uh, in the futures, uh, the market's been chopping around. So it's tough uh, to make any headwind this. Let's do this again. I'm going to go to the ninth. So, sorry, I did the wrong thing there. So let's go to the dollar, choose group, clear, ninth. Okay, we'll make this from the opening on the 10th through the 18th. Let's see how this group did. Well, this um, this is better, four and a half, five minutes, about 7% uh, difference here between the S&P and what these stocks did. And here's where uh, Pacific Ethanol is starting to show up. And it's up a mere 51.06% over that time period. What's the biggest loser? Health equity, HQY, uh, EXPA, which was a, uh, a really strong stock. It's... Uh, it's been uh, correcting profits being taken out of it. Amazon, auto. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, EXPI, and I'm going to go back to the 10th. Oh, you can see what's happened over the past several days. Now, where's the 10th? This is the 8th. I'm sorry, the ninth. I'm looking at the ninth. This is the ninth. Here is a pullback. Looked like it was going to go again. Open gap higher, ran into the resistance, and it's been uh, falling ever since. Um, so I, I'm, I was looking at the ninth. You, you can see that that folder is open. But look at all of these other great calls on EXPI. It just got caught up in the chop here. The group turned down, and uh, it, it may go again. But uh, uh, from this date, forward it has done nothing obviously what we're looking for is we're looking to get in earlier on a stock like this when the demand is at its greatest notice how tight it is here then it becomes a loose chart and uh, that's where you can really get beat up when you uh, think that uh, you can uh, jump in here and it's just going to go higher but if you start looking at these individual bars there's a distribution bar, there's a distribution bar, there's a distribution bar, there's a distribution bar, there's one, uh, there's one. Why do I say this? Because these are all red bars uh, based upon the uh, Tom Williams method, which uh, the close is lower than the prior day's close. Now, I wish I had more history on this. Uh, let, let's do one more. I'm not going to uh, show you... Uh, I'm going to show you everything, not uh, not just uh, things that uh, look really good because we have to be realistic about taking stops and so on. So this is the 10th this time, open on the Friday uh, through yesterday. Let's see how this group did. And wow, did I do that? No, I didn't do that, right? I've got a filter on. Make sure you don't have the filter on. But this, these are all the stocks that came up on the 10th. Not very many of them. Now, let's try this again. Now, that's more like it. So, 546 compared to uh, down 1%. So, uh, there's 6.5% uh, difference uh, on this whole group of stocks compared to the S&P. And what are the winners? There's Pacific Ethanol. Uh, here's a biotech stock. Workhorse has been really good, WKHS, APPS has been really good, and these showed up multiple times. Now I'm going to show you one more thing and then uh, end this video. 
I'm going to use the same group or these same groups. I'm going to clear them. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little confused here. I didn't want to do that. Yes, I did. Okay, I'm going to click on that arrow. I'm going to clear these. I'm going to clear these. And what I'm doing is I am going to go in and locate these stocks under the user groups. And I have them in a folder here. Uh, these are the top relative strength demand stocks using scan number 16 and from the 8th through the 18th with one day missing. And what I want to point out here is that uh, the stocks that keep reappearing are the stocks that you really want to pay attention to. So you can see that NVCR appeared eight times over these days. Uh, apps six times, Reggie six times, Green Brick Partners five times, Hibbit five times, and so on. Let's go look at NVCR. And you can see that uh, beginning on, I'm going to bring that up again, where did it begin? On the 8th. which is, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that that is the 8th when I click on here. This is where the demand really picked up. You can see it was under accumulation. Here's a shakeout. Here's demand. And uh, there was only one day where the demand filter uh, did not apply. And you can see that that was a low volume day. Other than that, this stock has moved dramatically. I'm going to bring up the AA annotation tool. Take it from the open here. Whoops, wrong, wrong device or wrong. Take it from the open on this day to the close on Friday. Up 33.6% if you look down here at the bottom over eight periods. So when if you start running this, uh, look for stocks that uh, continue to uh, continue to up here. Now I'm hoping when the uh, new version of HGSI comes out I can incorporate uh, this all into a smart group. I still may have to uh, use um, the demand screen on this uh, but uh, we'll see. I really don't know because I haven't seen it yet. Anyway thanks for listening and uh, go ahead and update your add-on and um, you don't have to delete the warehouse and the charts, although it really doesn't do any harm uh, to do that uh, each time. And then you'll know you're working with the same thing that I have.